Swiss move added to fears of a global slowdown, but U.S. markets today were mostly responding to oil continuing its slide and a series of disappointing quarterly earnings reports from the financial sector. Bank of America, the second largest U.S. bank by assets, reported a 14% drop in quarterly profits. Citigroup fell 3.7% after its quarterly profit dropped 86% mostly due to legal settlements and falling bond trading revenue. But all the volatility also translated into a rise for gold, the precious metal climbing over 2% for the day. All right, for more on the Swiss National Bank's new policy change and its impact on the markets, we're joined by John Allison, CEO of Unio Capital. John, good to have you on the show. Thanks for having me again. All right, John, big move that we saw over here. The Swiss saying we're ending this floor to the euro of 1.20. The big question is why and why now? Right. Well, they're both great questions. Uh, you said about, you talked about the marriage. Uh, this was really a, a long date between the euro and... A three-year courtship, uh, three, if you will. <laughs> three-year courtship. It was bound to come to an end at one point. But I think it would be helpful if you go back in time, when you're yours, back to 2011 in September, when the Swiss decided that they were going to put a ceiling on their currency, this 120 uh, ceiling. And they did that because at the time, the euro was falling apart. Uh, Spanish and Italian bond rates were very high. Everybody was worried that the euro might not exist, and people were panicking and buying Swiss francs. And the Swiss franc went up 20% in two months, July, August 2011. That was a huge emergency. And the Swiss uh, central bank stepped in and said, we want to solve that by putting a ceiling on our currency to protect our exporters so they don't have very high uh, uh, currency to export from and to prevent deflation from hitting Switzerland. So that's why it started then. Today's move was really actually not to deal with an emergency but to prevent an emergency. And that emergency being that the ECB will uh, go on a sovereign bond buying program, have a QE type of program? That's, that's the big part of it. So I think but John, that, wouldn't that mean then that, well, we saw the franc rallying 30% against the euro. So wouldn't it mean that now the euro would become even weaker? It would lose more of its value with a QE program, and the franc is now even going to get even stronger. Yes, I mean, you're actually right. And because of that, that's why I think the Swiss Act, what happened was the Swiss hold a whole lot of euros on their balance sheet. They are very afraid of the decline of the euro. The decline of the euro means that they're going to actually have to take a write down at some point of that euros they have on their balance sheet. And that would actually, if it was done in six months to a year from now, would actually wipe out all the Swiss National Bank's capital. They'd have to go back to their government to get more capital. So this was the reason I think it happened today is because in five days the ECB is meeting and the Swiss bank knew that if they didn't do this now, it would so be... So they're really betting on a move by Mario Draghi to go ahead with a big ECB stimulus program. Yes, whether it's January 22nd or March 22nd, it's going to happen. Well, let's look at the, at the short-term impact that this had on the Swiss markets, first of all. The, the Swiss stock exchange tanking 9%. Exporters are panicking. Toblerone, Lindt chocolates just got a whole lot more expensive. The CEO of, of Swatch watches saying that this is, this is carnage, this is madness. Is this going to really impact the, the Swiss economy? I don't think so. I think the Swiss are very clever, very strong, very hardworking, and I think in the end they're going to get through all of this. Yes, it's going to hurt their exporters to a degree, but I, don't, I think they are, are, have shown over the decades that they're resilient enough. Plus, with a strong Swiss franc, they're going to be able to buy companies outside of Switzerland, buy cheaper European companies. So I don't think it's all an unmitigated disaster for Switzerland, quite the contrary. All right, well, their exporters may suffer in the short term, but you're saying that the real implications is what the signals about the prospects for the Eurozone. Yes, I, mean, I think if you look back at time, we, since 2008, we've been going through this giant deleveraging in the world, this giant slowing of growth in the world. And the Europeans were very late in dealing with that. They had a big sovereign debt crisis. They're now finally beginning to do it. And I think their backs are to the wall, and I think Mario Draghi's at the point where he's got to do something, he will do something. So I think the big implication is not so much what it does to Switzerland, but what it means about Europe actually taking really profound so action. So what does it mean? It just says that Europe is in a bigger trouble than, than we thought? I think Europe is in big trouble, whether it's bigger trouble than we thought. And I think the most important thing, and one of the reasons I'm optimistic about Europe with all the bumps in the road that they're going to go through is I think the Europeans finally understand 
that they've got to act in a far more decisive way. It's the first time. John, uh, the, the dollar also taking a hit along with the euro. What does this mean for the U.S. markets? Why do we care if we do? I just, you know, in the case of the U.S. market, I think it's actually, it's, it's, it's interlinked. You know, when something goes wrong in some market, like for example in the S&P, when the energy stocks go down, even though it doesn't affect technology stocks, it, it hits technology stocks. I think this was just a connected effect the Swiss market going down, the change in currencies, the uncertainty, but I don't think it actually had any specific impact or a specific reason to do so in the U.S. market. I think that was just separate. Other than that, it signals there's big trouble in Europe and the Swiss are taking actions because they're sensing that trouble. Right, but also a solution is on its way in the form of what Mario Draghi and company are going to do over the next 12 months, but that solution is going to mean, could have been some trouble for the Swiss National Bank. John, let's quickly talk about what we saw happening uh, with gold. It had a big bounce on this up 2%. Why? 2% this today, 7% since the beginning of the year, and, and as I've said to you several times on your show, I don't think gold is anything more than a very important general insurance policy. When times are uncertain, when there's volatility, when there's, uh, you know, the tectonic plates are shifting, people, you know, run to gold. But I think it's an insurance move, nothing more than that. All right. Well, it's always a good move having you on the show.